Uh, hello, my name's James. Uh, welcome to the Edwards Tour Degree Podcast. I'm a software engineering apprentice and we're, today we have Jasmine. Hi, I'm Jasmine. I'm an electrical engineering apprentice. We have Sam. Hi, I'm also an electrical engineering degree apprentice. Uh, we have Charlie. Hi, I'm a software engineering degree apprentice. And we also have Zach. Hi, I'm a manufacturing degree apprentice. Uh, so today we thought we'd talk about uh, moving out uh, from home as an apprentice specifically and sort of the challenges around that and our experiences. So I just sort of want to go as uh, to why we did or perhaps didn't in some cases move out uh, to do an apprenticeship and we'll start with Jasmine I think. Um, so I moved out, I decided to move out for my apprenticeship. Um, I think that was always the plan for me. Um, I kind of classic teenager, hated all my family when I lived at home. Um, and I was like, I'm, I have to move out when I'm 18. Um, and to be honest, that wasn't because I was doing an apprenticeship. You know, if I went to uni or if I got a job, I would have moved out anyway. But um, yeah, I thought I, I definitely want to be a lot more independent and just have my own space. And Sam, you've also moved out as well, haven't you? Yeah, I've moved out. Um, I think the plan with me, I was always going to university, but it was like I wanted the feeling of being independent. I didn't hate my family, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I wanted to go as far away as possible just so I was actually like looking after myself because I know a lot of people they kind of take their washing home on the weekend and you know so obviously we can't do that at the minute but um, I just wanted to get f as far away as possible just to <laughs> make sure I was you know looking after myself and feeling independent and that's what I did. <laughs> Yeah, and this, well, similar for myself because I've moved out as well. But uh, mine was, I never really planned to. It just sort of happened uh, much with the sort of getting the job, just sort of went for it. I was applying for many jobs. There's quite a lot locally, um, but also just around anywhere and thought I'll deal with it when it comes to it a bit more. Uh, both Charlie and Zach, you're still living at home, aren't you? What was your decision around that, really? Um, so, so for me, uh, I'm, I'm looking at saving up to buy, really, rather than than rent for the time being. Um, sort of similar case as Jasmine, not a big fan of the family all the time. <laughs> and, and guess what? I've been ended up locked down with them for the last year, so we've been made to get along. Um, kind of regret, not regretting, but it would have been nice to experience that little bit of independence. Um, although, of course, that brings with it its own challenges with being by yourself and independent for long times than, than usual. So. A lot of admiration to you guys but for now I'm, I'm saving up and seeing what I can do to buy a place that way. And you'll, you'll get your opportunity to be in, to be independent you know like when you do get your house like you'll be you know you'll be you'll be fully independent you won't even have to pay rent and that so yeah. you know like that that, a, that time will come. If I had a choice I'd have stayed so I could save a bit more money but it, like I couldn't it's three and a half hours away I couldn't come <laughs> so kind of oh, forced to do that. I'm just on that sort of brink sort of two hours to an hour and a half away so I kind of just sort of I thought I'd make it work for now and then obviously because it's four years long I mean I could change whenever I feel like it sort of thing. Yeah the thing is though despite moving out I'm actually living at home because of the pandemic. Um, the place where I was living was quite small and the wi-fi wasn't too great and I thought why not go back home um, which got yeah. interesting when other family members came back as well and there was seven of us living in the house. Seven. Fortunate, yeah, there were seven of us. Um, fortunately, uh, I have got a nice office space, which was never really used as an office until the pandemic. And we we're like, oh, we can actually use it as what it's meant for, rather than just a storage room, which it still is. And it's a good job the virtual backgrounds on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we're the same. We've just um, converted a spare room that was downstairs into an office, so that my parents can work from home. Mm. It's quite good. Nice. My mum's converted my old bedroom into an office. <laughs> Good riddance. <laughs> That's quite funny. She's, a, she's probably glad to go. Out. Yeah, as soon as I move out, there's a desk in there. <laughs> she's got herself a laptop, a printer. It's perfect, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, no moving back for you then. Yeah, no. yeah exactly. Uh, no, but obviously we've each had our own unique experiences, especially those who have moved out. Um, just want to sort of ask what... Um, how you found the place that you were living like what what processes you went through what you were looking for and that kind of thing and we'll go with Sam who's probably the most recently done that um yeah so we well it was actually at, like at the start of the pandemic so what 
we weren't as concerned and people weren't as concerned um with like house viewings and things I, I don't know if they're doing it virtually now or what because i don't know how that would work but when i had the chance i could just go we came down for i think it was five days and we had a nice holiday down here so we booked a hotel on the seafront and we just went and looked at some houses throughout the week um i chose a few that i liked and then we went away um and then i didn't go with any of those <laughs> i got i got another one that was uh I've basically tried to go as cheap as I could at the minute, all bills included, uh, just to see what sort of money I'm living off. Um, so I've, it, they usually do a six month contract. I know some people were offering like one month, one month placements and you can leave within the month, which is quite a perk. But um, yeah, so it's a six month placement. It's coming to the end now, but I'm not really looking for another place because I, I don't really mind it here and I'm saving a lot of money. So that's my thinking cheaper cheaper the better until maybe i'll get a pay rise or something we'll see <laughs> what, what what site did you use that or were you like through an estate agent letting agents or something um can't actually remember it's like zoopla i think zoopla zoopla make it sound more upmarket than that yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what's the other one called um, oh, there's, there's many I, I use, ones. I use spare room as well. Spare, yeah, room's quite, spare room's good. It's quite good, especially for just the individual rooms which you're looking for rather than the full property because you're never going to rent that for a reasonable price, especially around Eastbourne. And it's also good for people that um, just have a spare room, surprisingly, but it's like, <laughs> like a, a family that, you know, someone's moved out or whatever and they just want to rent out. So you, there's a lot of opportunity to live with families or just one other guy someone who's not in the country a lot who's just renting out their place which can be a really good opportunity i imagine because you can get some quite nice places for quite cheap similar sort of thing for you as well isn't it jasmine sort of looking. yeah yeah i basically did the exact same thing um came down for a day because I, I don't really live very close so we came down for a day and did about six viewings and they're just on just on the day decided one um and yeah it was a bit it, it wasn't very clean you know it wasn't the greatest place to live but I managed to stay there for about a year to be honest I could have stayed there longer but I had issues with like one of the roommates and then I just decided that it was time to upgrade recently in November um, so I had a look around in answer to your question Sam about how they're doing viewings they do it like you just wear a face mask and then you turn up to the place um, so yeah uh, recently upgraded which was quite nice to now um, I've got a studio flat and it's just it's really nice to just be to have your own space and I think to be honest I think I, I appreciate it more because I lived in a house share before I think if I'd just gone straight to somewhere like this I don't think I, I would appreciate it as much and obviously you know I'm out of pocket more every month now but you know our pay is going up quite quickly you know twice a year pay rise so I think I think yeah I think it was the right decision I hadn't actually realised you'd moved because I knew your first place you were sort of well it's all right but I'd rather be somewhere else if you know what I mean yeah um at the start obviously I've been here for a year um with mine I um it was a contact of a family friend or something along those lines I can't quite remember but um they rent out to because Eastbourne have language schools so foreign students come for well between three weeks and about six months and sort of learn English and other languages as well and stuff um, but they were willing willing to um, rent to me, which was quite good because I've got <clears throat> garage spaces and all sorts because I tend to carry around a little kit with me, as I call it, um, which is quite good for me. But I have looked over the last um, sort of since about September, really, at other places. But it's obviously quite difficult in a pandemic. Yeah. But saying that there are lots and lots of places coming up because of the university as well. So every September, like coming up to September there will always be places because the fourth year students will be going on to different things or whatever so I, I realized that before I started my apprenticeship there was lots of place places coming available because you know they're all moving out. Mm. Yeah because you've got the University of Brighton Eastbourne campus haven't you in yeah. Eastbourne as well so there are a number of student houses that you can yep. um, rent from but I suppose as well with that, what sort of advice would you give, perhaps say if Zach was to move to Eastbourne, 
would you give to him in looking for a room to rent in a house share or even a studio flat or something what would you sort of say to look for what's you know your key indicators probably parking because i know you drive like that's not an issue for me because i don't drive but i say for you parking is probably quite important because you don't want to be having to park like half a mile away every day you know like i do <laughs> i um yeah when i actually moved to this place the landlord said to me this is not the place for parking i was like oh whatever i'll figure it out um i did actually i just figured it out <laughs> um, <laughs> there's some there's some roads about a five minute walk from here that i keep my car which isn't ideal obviously be nice to have like a garage but it's just not very likely is it at the minute um but yeah parking you know you always figure it out don't you you can't not like you can't no you can't stay. not park your car <laughs> yeah. no yeah. but that is one of the bigger issues in eastbourne is parking how they do run a not unreasonable parking permit scheme so yeah. um which i think cheapest you can get it is around 25 pound a year i think it is which yeah. isn't too bad even, even if you get the permit you still have to find a space <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> who my knows where that will be but... my house doesn't even offer a permit i think you have, the, the landlord has to apply to give it to the residents really i think so and um, mine just doesn't so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just have to find somewhere else yeah not too bad yeah i'd say as well is you've always got to make sure you've got to go and check the place and all of that kind of thing um just yeah. to sort of make sure you know what you're getting into if you can if you're sharing meet some of the other people you'll be sharing with because you just sort of get a general sort of vibe of who you're going to be living with because yeah ultimately you might not see them that much but you're still sharing a space with them kitchens yeah. with them and that kind of thing yeah i'd say check the cleanly cleanliness well i mean if you don't care about it being clean then don't worry but like the kitchen is usually a massive giveaway of like whether the people there are clean or not if you yeah. look like if you open the fridge and there's like you know like moldy stuff in the fridge and there's you know something down the back of it like then you know the people there don't clean up so like yeah you can kind of see i Got think a good thing to mention is you guys did some stays in a some student places right in chichester and that oh. was horrific wasn't it yeah <laughs> that's oh, a good no. good point actually there sam is the difference so um of the sort of student accommodation the challenges of being an apprentice so first year as um as a uni student you generally will be able to get a place in the university halls which we actually had the opportunity to stay in at chichester, uh, chichester uni at bogner campus let's get that all in um <laughs> and we had that one night a week to ease traveling um but the organization there they weren't particularly set up for accepting apprentices just to come and stay one night a week so it caused a lot of problems really yeah. uh, so in our second year we decided that we would get away with traveling there not that we've had to do that too much because we've had to do it from online as well but yeah. you know it's it's given us a good experience and i suppose that is the one disadvantage of coming in as an apprentice to a company especially for uh jasmine charlie and i um as first years where there are no other apprentices that might have some sort of house share set up i know other larger companies with a large apprentice base sort of have that set up as a thing where you sort of join a facebook group and you can kind of set up a house share with people you'll be working with as an apprentice um and in university you'd spend the first year sort of working out who you who you're going to share with find some friends you know four to six of them or so and sort of do it that way which is the one difficult is you are definitely going to be sharing with some strangers any future plans we have in regards to that because jasmine's obviously moved out and charlie said he's just saving up have any of you others sort of got any plans as to where you sort of want to move in your apprenticeship or what you'd look to do after your apprenticeship in terms of accommodation well eventually i'd like to get a garage space that's the goal really just so i can just work on things at home so at the minute like if i'm working from home i literally have i'd give you a room tour but it's an absolute mess so <laughs> i'm not gonna do that but i got a tiny room with a bed and a desk and that's about it um so i'd like a bit of extra space just for storage and to do some diy and stuff so i can look at things that i do at work as well 
yeah. some things actually interest me at work. <laughs> Everything interests me at work, and I'd like to take some things away and look. Also, what, how do you guys budget your meals? I suppose, like, like the change to moving out. How do you guys do it? Like, um, I know from the brief experiences that I've previously had with moving out, things like food prep was starting to become a chore by this sort of third month. As exciting as much as I love cooking and like the excitement of it, third month in, I was like roast dinner, peeling potatoes again. No, <laughs> you know. And there was two of us as well, like me and my girlfriend. Yeah. It was just yeah. yeah, it gets expensive if you don't. So mm. with my low cost strategy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I have a lot of takeaways. So that's where all my money goes. But um, <laughs> I've got a cookbook for Christmas, <laughs> and uh, that's a good way. Like I plan my meals on a Sunday, um, yeah. and then just get the ingredients on 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 the Sunday as well, and then sort it from there. But like I would do the classic thing where you make one meal, you make like a week's worth of food and then you freeze half of it. Um, so then I'd have a meal, you know, and like, to be honest, like I just found the best thing to do was to just try and switch up as much as possible. Like try and not have the same thing two weeks in a row, because like you're right, like as soon as you start making the same thing over and over again, it gets very like, I, like you just don't want to eat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like the other thing is that I've had to get bad, uh, like get used to my bad cooking. Because I like I'm a terrible cook, honestly, and I hate eating. I cook. You're an engineer. You've got to know a lot about like chemistry and you know. You'd think uh, that, but no. <laughs> no, I'm good so at chopping into squares, but like uh, past that, <laughs> it's like. Chopping it up, me, it I'm a terrible engineer, and that's why I'm a terrible cook. <laughs> 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 so that excuse does not work for me. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, you guys have actually had to cook in my situation. The people I live in with, it was full board, so it was full cooking. So they cooked for me when I was living so in Eastbourne, so which was pretty good in getting some good food. However, it was a bit awkward in terms of the times you wanted to eat compared to the times they wanted to eat. I'm quite an early eater, whereas they ate later, you know, half eight, eight to between eight and nine, probably, which I prefer to eat around sort of six ish. Um, How does costs sort of work with that how does the cost work it's all yeah, in I, mean, I paid for just... absolutely everything in one go and then they just you know cooked for you and everything so it's you know you didn't have to think about your food in that however i was quite i have a slight problem with meal deals and eating a lot of them so i still <laughs> even though i could have used raided the fridge for lunch I, I just decided that a nice walk to morrison's and go and find the most outlandish meal deal you could was always a good option <laughs> anyway um i was going to mention how it's a big step moving from like inland the midlands to the coast because oh, i think I bet you love it I, I don't know about all did all of you live on the coast when you were younger or yeah. i didn't yeah. know i um lived well a similar sort of thing known as like birmingham and that sort of west midlands area is known for being miles from the coast i was also probably about 80 miles or more from the nearest sort of beach as well so it's quite nice to move to yeah. the coast moving to the coast it's just it's just different isn't it it's just nice <laughs> it's isn't it brilliant yeah massive the seagulls are annoying for one it's, well <laughs> that's the thing actually the amount of times having a red car seems to be a problem that's something i'd recommend if you move to eastbourne don't have a red car because they like to bomb your car with some pretty <laughs> horrific messes <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I'm not sure See, I'd ever move to Midlands. I wouldn't. What's wrong with it? Midlands is great. I'd, I'd move back to the Midlands. I'm just, uh, well, just I different. Can understand what you say there. Sorry, Sam. I just, the accent's so strong. <laughs> not. <laughs> not having it. Is it really different, though? I'm actually interested. Is it actually different? Yeah, the air is just different. It's just fresher on the coast. It's Fair sunnier enough. down here as well. It's cold up north. Well, right. you lot say up north. It's not north. It's the Midlands. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not north. <laughs> it's north of here. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, but yeah, it's cold, dark, gloomy. <laughs> really? I didn't. Re I didn't ever realise that there was an actual but difference. The engineering in the Black Country is the best. You can get any car park ever, basically. <laughs> any, Motorsport any Valley, floor. isn't it? Huh? Motorsport Valley. 
Yeah. Where because there's so much engineering based teams across there and engineering stuff. But yeah. It's great that it's down Eastbourne. You can actually live somewhere really nice like Eastbourne. Uh, I like walking along the seafront. I have actually. I don't know. I have done it a couple of times. Gone actually and just swum in the sea. I got a full length yeah. wetsuit. I did it in about old uh, October, September, October, end of September, start of October. Yeah, yeah. it's really um, nice, isn't it? Nice pier as well. Um, the run along the seafront is nice. It's ju- it is just nice to walk along the seafront, isn't it? It's yeah, just, yeah. It's never, in the middle. It's, of it's never really occurred to me that there's a difference living near the seafront because, like, I've always lived within like half an hour's walk of the beach. You know, so, or, or, like take a bike, it's you're no more than like 10 minutes away from the beach. And and like um, I've been really fortunate. My, my family's always owned a beach hut. Um, so like you can't even get them anymore. There's such a long waiting list to like get them. It just complete fluke that we ever found one. So like part of the beach has like, always been part of my life. I couldn't imagine like it's only dawned on me. You talk about it like 80 miles to get to the beach. So even if you... Even if you average 60 miles an hour, that's going to be an hour and a half's drive nearly to, yeah, well, um, to get something that is just Western, like... Yeah, it's Western Supermare in Breen from the Midlands, um, the the Brummies holiday. Um, <laughs> it's about, it's about a, an hour and a half drive to the beach and that's just where you go on holiday and it was amazing going, but now living here it's just completely different. Yeah, yeah I think it's also, we've sort of mentioned about the difference between moving out as a student going to university and also the sort of and moving out as an apprentice but also what that's like moving out and going into a working environment straight from education and your different responsibilities in that rather than moving out and still being in education full-time yeah um so charlie do you want to try and just sort of say your difference between school and work as a sort of start having not moved out yet I have to say, like, with, with the schoolwork that I had, I always struggled with motivation. Uh, I was like, I was that kid that would, like, turn up and someone would go homework and I'd be like, what homework? You know, I, I really was honestly terrible at, like, driving myself to independently do work. Mm-hmm. And, um, like, now, though, uh, as part of my apprenticeship, I, I, I really haven't, not through any conscious effort, I mean, I'd love to say that I've, really like dedicate myself and I've got a planner now and a journal and I write everything down I don't but um only unless I have to but other, other than that you know um I think the difference is is largely for me that the motivation comes from um at, at school and college I, I you know probably struggled because you're you're doing it and the only person to benefit is yourself so it's easy to dismiss having to do the work you go oh well you know it's, it's only my grade so you know I'll catch up on that later Whereas when it comes to work, you know that actually someone else uh, down the line is waiting on you to produce that bit of work or, or, or the grade that you get is going to actually have a real term impact on what happens at work in your reviews and discussions with your manager. So from that standpoint, I think it, it makes like difference in working. I've not struggled with motivation at all in in terms of like having a complete different perception of it whether i was actually aware of it at first or not um maybe i'm just really out of touch but it it's it took me a while to realize like how have i not even how have i not even like missed a deadline yet you know yeah. <laughs> you should see me at college I, i'm i'm yeah there's stories i probably shouldn't even admit to at college <laughs> with like things that i i missed or or you know completely overshot the deadline but it's yeah. Yeah, I still have problems with organisation, but motivation-wise, yeah, that's what I. That's my main difference. Sorry if I dragged that on a bit, but I think there's so much more accountability at work, isn't there? Sort of, yeah. it's not just accountable to you and perhaps sort of your teacher in a way. With us, you know, I me and Charlie work in the same team. My work's got to be done, so Charlie can, who's working in testing at the moment, and the other testers can do their testing, which can then produce the product, which the managers can then present to the stakeholders. And it's that whole chain. And if you haven't done that, it does then reflect back on you. And it's that whole sort of chain of, you know, so much more. And it allows you can, once you get an understanding of that bigger picture, which you can do at college in a way where you can see if I work hard here, I can get the grades. I can go and do what I want. I can be this. I can be that rather than, you know, trying to cram it all in and whatever else. But you get in, you get that understanding of the bigger picture so much more quicker. And it allows you really to you get that motivation from, I think, sort of almost the accountability, but also 
wanting to please other people more as well. Yeah. yeah. And also you're paid, you're getting paid as well. So you feel yeah. I like I personally like I don't want to slack off because I'm being paid for my time to concentrate and to do this work. So obviously I'm going to do the best that I can. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And it's not pressure, really. It's, mm. it's more motivation. Like, even though they're depending on us, we mm. don't, we're not like majorly pressured to the point where we're scared to not do it. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're helped along the way. And, mm. and it's good to, you know, give your bit to the whole chain, like James was saying. I think as well, from that kind of being able to gain the overall bigger picture and having that sort of view of things, it also helps you when you have moved out from home because you can understand what you're doing. You know, your bills, your, your planning, your time. I've got to go and shopping there. I've got this coming up. Oh, I need to get my car in for the MOT that day. How am I going to get that in for to the garage and also be able to, you know, get into work? Who have I got to contact and that kind of thing? You have that greater understanding of what's going on, which I think you don't necessarily get when you're at college or school yeah yeah and I feel like we're treated uh, as equals as well we've mentioned it so many times before but in school you're always spoke down to aren't you really I know yeah. you, you shouldn't be and they say that they don't but <laughs> you're always lower than the teachers yeah. um at work we're definitely not and that's just something that I enjoy I think it takes a level of maturity as well. Um, you've got to, you're obviously, you're, you're coming into a workplace of experienced professionals. Um, and that kind of thing of being around, obviously, the average age at Eastbourne is <clears throat> well over 40, I would still think. Mm. Um, and it's going down with recruiting younger people, which is sort of the aim of the company. But you that rubs off on you that mature sort of experienced attitude it helps you sort of make the decisions in general life as well yeah and to expand on that as well like at school or at college like the pathway of learning is kind of one way as in like the teachers are teaching you and that's it whereas at work I definitely feel like obviously some people are, are more open to learning from us than others you know some people are kind of stuck in their ways which is fine um, but, you know, I, definitely a lot more people are open to actually learning from us and seeing, you know, what we have to say and what they can, yeah, what we can bring, which I find is, you know, really like, it, it's just, it just adds to the motivation because it, it helps me feel that my like opinion is valued. It's far more of an open conversation, isn't it, in terms of you are, I was, wouldn't say, well, your partner's in it, aren't you? It's your it's a team yeah. so you each have to contribute and you giving something in yeah. even as an apprentice but you will generally gain more of other people as well but it's that whole team-based thing well, rather than the student exactly, yeah. teacher yeah. relationship that you have a thing where which is far more of a uh, a taking from one one giving and one taking rather than the collaborative give and take between all sort of attitude yeah. that you have in a engineering team you've both got a common goal and yeah. they need to get the results as much as you do and that is you know mm. what what i learn from especially because you know they, they might do it a lot faster than i do but they show me how to do it and give me a job so that i can help them and they can help me yeah and that's the good thing about working at edwards or an apprenticeship in general Mm. Also, also they're, they're as keen as possible to get get us to be like productive members of the team as well. So the the learning that you're doing isn't just like I feel like with the abstract concepts you get at school can sometimes leave you like questioning more. Whereas at work, if if there's a loose end in your understanding of it, the guy, the, the person that you're working with is going to be like, you know, what is, you know, what is this question that you've got? And and because you're working on live examples, you're going to have them loose ends and be forced to ask the person. You, you can't, there's no escape in the fact yeah, that you yeah. have to gain an understanding of that. You have to ask them. And obviously they, they, they want to make sure you've got the right way of tying that up. Mm. So you become as effective or productive member as possible in that team. Which I found, I've, I've found is like understandings exponentially grown since leaving a levels. I, I think I've really taken off in my ability, mm. just, just from a personal standpoint. I don't know about the rest of you. No, it's I, that, I agree. It's that agree. constant learning, but also that constant maturing and sort of growing into into a workplace as someone, you know, going into a full office based workspace at 
you know, 18, 19 is still really unusual. And actually, it takes some form of level of maturity because you are that much younger than the people around you. Mm. That you do have to be there and doing that. And I think moving out helps you with that um, in some ways because you are able to build your whole life around being far more mature and responsible for what you're doing and having that sort of being paid as well. So as a student, not as saying, you know, you're not maturing as your student, you're always maturing in some respects. Other times you can be, you know, getting less mature, but you, you, it's not really your money. You know, it's your student loan. You'd be, your parents will be helping you out probably a bit and that kind of thing. Whereas it's your money, it's your responsibility. Um, yeah. If you screw up with your own money, it makes you, well, it makes you accountable to yourself. If you screw up with your parents' money, you put, your parents are asking questions, but mm. it makes you have that far more respect because you've worked for that money that you've got. You've put the effort in, you know, you spent, you know, eight till four forty-five or whatever we do, yeah. um, doing, doing the doing the work, earning the money, and then that is yours to actually deal with, isn't it? Rather than yeah, and then you buy a pizza and you're like, that is fifteen minutes of work. <laughs> is it worth it? <laughs> I try not to that. think of it like that because that just feels painful. I go, that's the money there. It's like you disassociate yeah. it a bit, but it's still what you've earned. Or a, 20 pound takeaway and you know that is like so much yeah, so i've worked so hard for this <laughs> but in a way that's just, that's the reward isn't it you are able yeah. you know i know you're low yeah. cost but you still have that money sitting there where it goes you know a student might be going oh can i get away with it most of the exactly. time you go i actually just fancy us like buying something slightly stupid at this point it'll be all right we can we'll get away with it i've earned yeah. it you know i've worked yeah. for that i i want to spend my money yeah yep. exactly that's the, yeah i've got to say that's another nice part like something i i absolutely can stand about being at college was trying to earn money and be you know like at the same time and being able to facilitate my hobby so at the time it was air cadets and like my car now there's a lot of motoring 3d printing you know just just being able to pay for things that i want to enjoy doing um maybe it's not so much for those of you that moved out but maybe you enjoy the independence um, and that. But. No, I think that's been some good discussions there. Um, it's really interesting to view something a bit more outside of work in some ways and how also our work helps us in our situations. Yeah. All right, thanks for having us. Thank you. Thanks, James. Thank you, everyone. Cheers, James. Cheers, James. Right, cheers. cheers, everyone. Thanks. Bye. 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 <laughs>